Yo, what's going on guys? It is JD here, back with another episode of the No Money Spent Road to Glory. And today we have got plenty of EVO stuff to talk about. We've played a lot of games since yesterday. We're at 550 tokens pretty much now. So we've got a lot to talk about then. And we've also got a diamond card to get, which is from the Domination Rewards. So we've got a lot to get through today, as we always do. And the limited time event today is actually pretty nice. We get a three times multiplier on MT when opening the vault in Triple Threat offline of course. Now of course the only MT actually in here is 1000 MT. I actually forgot about that. I thought there was a 20,000 MT in here as well. So the only way you're going to get that bonus is of course if you get that 1000 MT it will turn into 3000 MT and in that two hour slot you might get it once or twice. You might not get it at all. Um, so yeah, not the best limited time event. I much prefer the ones that are guaranteed something after every game. So a bonus 300 MT for winning each game or a token for each game. Those limited time events are really nice, uh, but this one right here doesn't really get me too excited for playing the game. And then in terms of the daily agenda today, sadly, nothing good here either. Triple Threat Online, Triple Threat using two heat check players from the Lakers, and then Unlimited Game using five Lakers heat check players. So again, not great. Uh, and then of course the weekly ones will change soon. Hopefully we'll get something a little bit better as we go into next week. So, Domination... Uh, yeah, we've advanced quite a lot. So yesterday, we had one game left in the Pacific Division. So we played that, so we got the 15 tokens, and the, of course the three tokens for winning the game, so we've got 18 tokens for that game. And we've gone through the entirety of the Southwest Division. So we've got a heap ton of tokens from that. And then not only that, if we go right over to the end, we got the 15 tokens for getting 33 stars as well. So that is how we've managed to jump up to 550 pretty much tokens, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now, I've only got three more conferences, uh, three more divisions, sorry, to go. And then we've got the three all-time NBA teams. And then we are done with domination, which is ridiculous to think at this stage of the game. I know people had it done in like the first week, but I don't have that type of time. But doing really well with it. And then the only thing that's going to be left to grind in this game is going to be triple threat offline. So I might have to actually prioritise this over domination because... I don't want to finish Domination and this be the only thing I have to do. I want it to be so I can play both at the same time and grind them both uh, as we go along. Because I have had some comments actually down below saying about this Jamal Crawford being really good. from A comment from Mr. F, I believe, saying how good he is. And then also I've had some comments about how good this pink diamond Serge Ibaka is. Of course, he goes up to a Galaxy Opal. So we could have a Galaxy Opal uh, Evo card, which would be ridiculously nice. Uh, and that comment was from Mick Mahon. So, or Maha Mahon? <laughs> However you say your name. I'm so bad with names. I know it's awful. From Mick, uh, he said he's got this pink diamond Surge. Got him up to a Galaxy Opal and he is an absolute beast. So at some point we will get to him. And then, I don't know, maybe somewhere down the line this year, we'll get up to this Galaxy Opal, Dominique. It's not even a great card, but the fact you can get a Galaxy Opal for free, that definitely makes me want to get it, especially on a no-money-spent series. Right, so, uh, actually, before we get into any Evo stuff, while I have you guys here, I'm going to try and put a poll in this. So if you see a poll pop up in the top right-hand corner of the screen, be sure to check it out and... Uh, Click on yes or no uh, for a vote. And that a question is going to be, is should I have a face cam for my videos? Would it add a lot to these videos? Would you guys really care if there was a face cam or not? Would it really enhance the viewing experience? Let me know in the top right-hand corner on that poll and let me know down below if you would want to see it. So I do have a camera. I don't have my setup ready just yet, but I could get it done. And if it's something you guys want to see, well, if you want to see me, I'm not sure you guys really want to, but if you think it'll add to the viewing experience, then let me know uh, and I'll, of course, get to it. So, moving on to Evos. So move down here, Josh Smith. Josh Smith? Nope, Joe Smith. Uh, coming in with 151 rebounds already. And we played 11 out of these 60 games needed. Now, uh, I think three of those games were in Triple Threat Offline. So he's played eight games of Domination. Uh, and he has been really, really good. He's been averaging about 20 rebounds a game. The best game I had with him, he got 26 boards, which is really nice. Um, but to be fair, he's actually a really, really good card. Uh, he's not like some of these other cards, like the Vinnie Johnson, that aren't actually fun to use and are just evoing them for the sake of it. This card is actually really nice and fun to use. And the fact that there are no... Uh, there are none of his diamonds up, I don't believe. There weren't the last time I checked. And there is one up. Okay, there's one up with a 12-hour time limit on it. So that is going to sell for quite a lot of MT. His Amethyst is still coming in at around the 15k mark, 20k mark. Wow, there's 
There's barely any on the market. What's happened to him? He's back up at 25k. And that's what we paid for him originally. And I thought that was a massive L. So I guess that wasn't such an L after all. So yeah, we paid pretty good price for him. So of course, with his Amethyst being a decent price anyway, his diamond is guaranteed to sell for quite a lot. Ah, actually, yeah, we have some auction outcomes to talk about. So let's get rid of all these uh, unimportant things right here. And then let's talk about this Chuck person. So 67,500 MT for the Diamond Chuck person that we evoed up yesterday. Uh, of course, we bought him as an Amethyst for, oh, how much was it? It was about 10K, I think, maybe. Uh, and there you go, there's one there that's been up for a minimum three hours at 62K that has not sold. This one, 65K bid, not sold. So we got so lucky yesterday, uh, or overnight, getting 67,000 for him. I knew undercutting was a good idea. I didn't think his price would stay that high for that long, uh, and I was definitely right in that regard. His Amethyst is still coming in uh, around 10K, so we made a lot of profit on that chart person, and we are really close to 500K now, uh, which is absolutely insane. And then we look at the other Evo cards. So Junior Bridgman, look at the progress we are made with this guy. We're only 400 points away, and we're eight games away. So in every game of domination at the moment, uh, and of course we are talking about all-time domination on the Superstar difficulty, in every game I am winning by about 40 to 50 points, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm genuinely winning by that much, and we are scoring at least or roughly 100 points with Junior Bridgman. So he's getting from anywhere from 95 to 105 points per game, uh, which is absolutely insane. He's been absolutely killing it for me. He's actually not been that uh, too bad of a card. It's actually been reasonably fun to use. Uh, I definitely will be selling him, though. I don't really have a need for this card on my squad when he is evoed. And, of course, we are just evoing the cards to make plenty of MT. And if we take a look at his diamond card, he is still selling for around the 40k mark. Hopefully he doesn't come down too much further than that. Um, but, yeah, we're only going to need to pay... Four more games of domination with him, and then we'll do a couple of games of Triple Threat offline just to get those final games ready on his requirements. Of course, we can still use Joe Smith. We need to actually start scoring with him. At the moment, he is solely in there for his rebounds, which is definitely going to be the thing that's going to take the longest amount of time. And then we head on down to the Ruby section, and we've got the Vinnie Johnson. Again, haven't really used him to score, but he's just been in the squads, getting those game played up, and he's on 16 already, and he is coming in as an Amethyst card, and he is selling a Let's take a look. Still around 60k. His price is coming down by the day though, so I do really want to get him done because he is relatively easy. As long as you can get those games done, the 900 points is an absolute doddle. So we'll definitely have to look at getting some triple threat offline games done just so we can evo these guys up super nice and quickly. Uh, and of course, we can still get some rebounds in triple threat offline as well. Now we have an exclamation mark and it is down in the domination section and it is the team basketballs for the West and it is for the Diamond Bob McAdoo. So we are, what is this, the second to last card that we're going to get from all of the dominations. So let's lock him in. We should have to go and pack him as we do. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a diamond walkout. Really good to see the pack animation. We've barely seen it at all this year, I feel. Uh, all the cards we've got have just gone straight into our collection. So it is actually nice having to unpack some of these players. So we've got Clippers, we've got a center, and it's of course going to be Bob McAdoo. So we'll go ahead and take a look at his Evo stats and have a good old chat about what we are going to do moving forward with all of these domination cards because of course we've still got the ruby ones that we haven't actually evoed yet uh, and of course we're going to be getting a diamond jerry stack house as well for completing the rest of domination so yeah we're going to have a lot to evo uh, in the next couple of days and you can see there we've only got one more space now and we do have this bob mcadoo in the squad now so in terms of the cards we've already got sean livingston and danny green are done cliff robinson bob Sura, mahmoud and mo peterson none of them are done yet and we do have now the Bob McAdoo added to the squad. So first of all, let's just take a look at his badges and his stats. And then I just hovered over his <laughs> Evo requirements there. And straight away, I can think we're not going to do that. But we'll take a better look at them in a second. So in terms of his badges, we've got one Hall of Fame badge, put back boss. So nothing crazy there. We've got Relentless Finisher. We've got Drop Stepper, Brick Wall. We've got Rim Protector. We've got Box Rebound Chaser, Worm, Back Down Punisher. Very nice. Contact Finisher. We have got a Giant Slayer. Okay, Slithery Finisher. And Dream Shake coming in uh, at the bottom there. He is 6'9". Can he play power forward? He can. So I definitely wouldn't recommend putting this guy at centre. He is uh, way too small for that in my opinion. In terms of his stats, we've got 94 for the driving lap. We've got a really nice post game. Really good mid-range at an 89. Driving dunk of a 95. He's actually got a bit of ball handling at 75. Interior defence at 88. Block at a 94. Great rebounding and decent speed. Decent vertical and decent strength. So all around, not an awful card, but not an incredible card. 
Um, and then that is his requirements. Oh my god. Score 3,000 points, 1,500 boards, 200 free throws, and 75 games. And then the stats he's going to get, is going to get a 97 driving layup. We're going to get a 3-point shot plus 20 to a 50, which is completely irrelevant because 50 is still awful. Mid-range goes up to a 93. Uh, speed with all, again, goes up 19, but it only goes to a 50 still. So, again, pretty irrelevant. Speed goes up to 84, that's nice. Acceleration goes to 84, that's nice. Strength to 92, again, that's pretty nice. Vertical to 80, uh, 93. So he gets a couple of stats that go up by a little bit, but nothing crazy. And in terms of his badges, we do go up to six Hall of Fame badges. So he's going to get a box rebound chaser, worm contact finisher, and cross key scorer. And he gets two gold badges as well. So uh, all in all, I have to say that's pretty underwhelming for a pink diamond Evo. And especially with those requirements, that is insane. So obviously to put that into some perspective, if we were to do that in domination, it's going to take 30 games of scoring 100 points per game. And of course, that's without even talking about getting the rebounds and the free throws as well. I can imagine that is so frustrating. Um, so yeah, it's just not going to happen, guys. It's just not going to happen. We are not going to be getting the pink diamond Jerry, uh, not Jerry Stackhouse, the Jason Richardson. We're not going to be getting him. 3,000 points is absolutely ridiculous. We're doing these ones with like 14, 1,500 points, which is okay because we're making MT off of it. This guy is just going to be an untradeable that's just going to sit in the club that we are not going to use. Just like Clyde Drexler and Kevin Garnett, these guys just will not be used. They will just collect dust. Uh, and to be fair, he's not even like a super uh, impressive card. Like, we've had a look at his stats. He's six foot nine as a center slash power forward. It's just not great. And we're going to be getting the Jerry Stackhouse. And if he's got, well, I'm imagining he's, he's going to have similar requirements to Bob McAdoo. So if it's score 3,000 points with him again, it's just not going to happen. But then we're only going to get a pink diamond at the end of it. We've already got a team that's nearly full of pink diamonds. Uh, and of course, you can buy people off the auction house that are going to be diamonds to pink diamonds, just like the Bob Love that we had. So Bob Love, he came in at, what did we need for him? Is it 2,000 points, something like that? And we managed to sell him for 120k. Like, I'd much rather do that every day of the week uh, than spend or spend that much time getting 3,000 points on a card. That is just insane, in my opinion. So Bob McAdoo, he is not going to be touched now. And I think that puts the end to all of these guys down here as well. Bob Sura and Mo Peterson on my Evo, just because they do look fun cards to use. Um, but... I'm definitely not going to be evoing out um, a mood. There's no point in him, and there's definitely no point in doing this Cliff Robinson either. So it's a little bit of a shame. Maybe if we did it earlier in the game's life cycle, I would have been more inclined to do it. But even still, 3,000 points would have taken so long. Uh, and now, yeah, getting a Pink Diamond as a reward. I know he can go up to Galaxy Opal, but I think the jump from him from Pink Diamond to Galaxy Opal isn't even that impressive. I don't even think he gets that many boosts. And in general, I just don't think any of the or all of the time it would take to get all of these cars fully evoed, I just don't think it would be worth it. Yes, we would come out of it with two pink diamonds and one Galaxy Opal after we've got Jay Rich fully upgraded, but it's just not worth it. It is just not worth it. We've got plenty of Evo cards that we're already working on, of course. And then if you come into Triple Threat offline, if you get up to 300 wins, you're already going to get another diamond that goes to pink diamond. 500 wins, of course, you've got the Abaka who goes from pink diamond to Galaxy Opal, and I think he needs something like 3,000 points. So uh, we could do 3,000 points on Serge Abaka, get him to a Galaxy Opal, or do 3,000 points on a Bob McAdoo and get him to a pink diamond. So it just makes no sense. It's completely backwards in my opinion. So yeah, sadly, that is going to be at the end of our little run uh, with the Domination Evo cards. It's been fun getting all these guys done. Like, don't get me wrong. It was fun to try out all the different cards. Like, out of these lot, Derek Jones Jr. stands out to me. Uh, he was a super fun card to use with the Terence Ferguson, the Manu Bielitsa. These were great cards and it was fun to use so many different players. Um, but... When it comes to these guys, the grind just gets too much. You know, th these guys had really fun requirements, you know. A lot of them were under 100 points. A lot of them were just, like, score three pointers, get rebounds, get assists. And they were nice and easy. They were good to do. Uh, but when you start talking about 3,000 rebounds, or 3,000 points, sorry, and 1,500 boards, that's just insane. Like, 900 rebounds on this guy is going to be bad enough. But 1,500 on somebody who's six foot nine? Like, that's just insane. Uh, and yeah, for the rewards he gets in terms of his stats and badges, he is just a big, big no from me. So we're going to leave that for the time being. We are going to head into the market, though, and we are going to pick up someone 
uh, before we get out of here today. And we are going to pick up the Colin Sexton. So I did have a little chat about him yesterday. And I said he was one of the other cards from that Moments of the Week set that actually looked reasonably decent. Uh, and I thought we might add him into the squad. And we definitely can because we can put him in place of the Bob Sewer off the bench. Because, of course, we're not going to be using him anymore. Don't really care about using him. And this Colin Sexton actually looks a little bit better than him. He looks Well, he is lightning quick. He's got really nice stats offensively. Defensively, not great. But I've seen a couple of gameplays of him. Uh, over the well over last night really and into today uh, and he actually does look really fun so we're going to pick him up we'll add him into the budget squad that we have uh, and look at me China's find one that's like 50 MT cheaper even when we've got like nearly 500k MT but always got to try and save as much MT as you can so we'll add Colin Sexton into the squad we'll go into our budget lineup and we'll add him at the backup point guard position. I absolutely love using Sapphires. It was the same last year. Sapphires and Rubies were some of the funnest cards to use. And this year has been no exception. I'm really excited to try out this Jonathan Isaac and everyone else in the team. It's just so good. You just can't go wrong with these uh, with these Sapphire players. If they play as good as... Or if you have as much fun with them as you do with a God Squad, then absolutely keep on using them. And of course, you can beat them. At the end of the day, this game comes down to skill more than anything else. If you're better than your opponent 99% of the time, you're going to beat them. At 1% of the time, it will come down to... Uh, well, in terms of your team. Uh, maybe it's more than 1%. Maybe like 5 or 10% of the time, it will come down to team. But the majority of the time, it will fully come down to to who is the best player on the day. Before we get out of here, we do have one comment from yesterday. Well, we had a couple from yesterday, uh, but this is the most interesting one. So we've got one from Johnny Massa, uh, and it's actually a four-part question. So, uh, yeah, it might take a little while. So first of all, he says, is Chuck worth it? And, of course, talking about Chuck Person, uh, is he worth it in terms of evoing him? Absolutely. So as we saw, I sold mine for 67K. We made about 55K profit on him. That's really nice. In terms of buying him to actually use him, um, he was he was good fun, but I, I don't think he's anything special. I think you know the sapphires we've got on the team could probably do as good a job as he did. Uh, and for the price, if you're paying this much just to get him on your team, I definitely think that would be a pretty bad move. Not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, moving on, he says two uh, number two or point two that he has. Uh, Tripuka is a bust even at a diamond, and yeah, I completely agree with that. Uh, oh, actually, we can't search for him, can we? Uh, we can go shooting guard and we can go diamond and he should show up. There we go. Wow, he's already down 80k. That's insane. So yeah, everyone else is clocking on that this card is not that great. Uh, Vinnie Johnson is definitely the better out of the two in terms of value anyway. Uh, but yeah, this guy had him as a sapphire. Evoed him up to the sapphire from Emerald. Uh, but after that, yeah, he didn't really do it for me. Uh, and next up he says, he finally got Jamal Crawford to a pink diamond and put some Adidas joints on him. So a plus three and plus mid range. And he's the best offensive card in the game. Now that is a big claim, Johnny. So uh, yeah, we'll have to test that one out when we eventually get to this card. He does look really, really good on paper. Uh, and of course, his Jamal Crawford card is going to be really, really fun to use. Plenty of ankle breaker animations and stuff like that. So I will get up to this card eventually and uh, we will have a lot of fun with him. And then part four to the question, is Magic Johnson worth it? Now, uh, let's go ahead and take him into the arena, just show off his hot zones and his dribble moves, because I actually haven't done that yet, so I don't actually know what his hot zones are, I don't know what his release is like, I don't really know anything about him, I know that his stats on paper are pretty good for a 6-9 point guard, I haven't actually heard great things, I've heard people say that he is not that good, but we will be the judges of that here today, so let's go ahead and put Magic Johnson into the lineup, so he goes up to a pink diamond with Mike D'Antoni as my coach, a 9-6 overall, and he comes in with a 83-pointer, 82 on the mid-range, a 98 driving layup. We get a 88 draw foul, 98 ball handling. And then we also come down here, and we should have a boost to the speed as well. So his speed, or not shot contest at 98, god damn, that is high. 85 speed, 81 acceleration. So let's take a look at his hot zones. So he actually doesn't have any hot zones anywhere apart from down under the rim, uh, and let's take a look at his release. He looks absolutely massive, not going to lie. Uh, he looks like an absolute unit. His release is really, really slow. I don't remember it being this slow last year, not going to lie. Um, I guess it's Magic Johnson without a quick draw. I mean, there's definitely no way this card has quick draw. Gee, Jesus Christ, can we, actually, can we actually hit a shot out here? This release is not it, but there we go. We finally get a green light. Um, but yeah, it's a Magic Johnson card. You don't expect to be a lights out shooter from three. Uh, I'm kind of getting the hang of it a little bit right here, but it's still not the easiest to time. Uh, but yeah, you don't expect him to be an absolute sniper from three. Uh, you expect him to just be facilitating, be good on the passing. Of course, he comes with Hall of Fame floor general and Hall of Fame diamond. So he is going to be making everyone around him so much better. Uh, and of course, uh, if you matched up against anyone who is remotely undersized, 
You can just take it down in the post and just start bullying them uh, and then just absolutely abuse it down in the post as we miss that hook there or fade there of course um, but yeah it's a magic johnson card it's a six nine point guard it's what you expect you don't expect him to be a lights out shooter from deep i know last year we we're all used to the ridiculous cards that could just do everything shack shooting threes etc um, but that is not what 2k20 is about which is only a good thing obviously uh, let's try and hit a fade here uh, and we go and we miss another one so maybe his post fade isn't great um, but he does feel pretty quick it feels pretty nice on the handles look at this i mean i'm not a dribbler obviously because i'm just spamming the trigger here but um yeah he looks pretty good uh, on the floor so yeah is he worth it in my opinion definitely it's a free card you know obviously i had to play quite a lot to get him but at the end of the day i didn't have to pay any mt to get him uh, and we're still seeing with plenty of mt and now we've got a dime magic johnson in our club but i think always having him on your roster is going to be really advantageous if you come up against anyone who is uh, cheesing somehow or if they've got a really really tall point guard and you want something to counter it you're gonna have this magic johnson here and of course defensively he's gonna be pretty damn good because height is everything this year right i'll try and green one more three uh, if i ever can jesus christ has been horrendous uh, and then we will get out of here for today there we go green that three and let's get out of there. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Be sure to let me know down below, like I said, and vote in the poll. Is a face cam important? Would it add anything to the series? And would you guys like to see it? So let me know. I'll be very interested to see what you guys say. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. As usual, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.